So today we're going to talk about green jungle orchid food. And it's a special orchid food that I developed uh, several years ago after visiting jungles all over the world. What I did is I actually measured pH at the roots, rainwater pH, I measured light, I measured everything I could to figure out what makes these plants grow in nature. And in nature there's all kinds of things that happen that we can't really duplicate them at home. So I worked with two PhDs in plant physiology, one at the University of Minnesota and another at a fertilizer company. And what we ended up doing was creating a food after about 14 or 15 formulas that works really well with all orchids. The way you use this is you just put two tablespoons in a gallon of water. And you can just use a, a milk jug and just measure it out. And uh, it is green, to let you know that it is there. And you can store this, but you want to be able to put it in the dark when you're not uh, using it so that algae doesn't start growing in it. That's all there is to it. And here's what we do. Plants that are in moss, like this one, we only feed every three or four weeks. The moss holds a lot of nutrients and it's just fine for um, that kind of plant. Most plants do very well with moss and being fertilized every three or four weeks. Plants in bark or cocoa husk, they can be fed every other time you water, during the winter and in the summer, um, you can do it every time you water, but flushing with clear water at least once a month. And what you want to see when you look at these plants is the progression of the growths. So you can see the seedling growths, and here they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger until you see these large ones. That tells you that the plant is moving forward, it's growing well, it doesn't even need any support. Um, so all along here you can see where the buds are going to come out when it reaches this blooming cycle this year. You can see it on this Cattleya Leopoldii alba also. You can see the seedling growths marching right up and you can see that they're getting bigger and finally right up to blooming size. This Phalaenopsis also is producing a lot of flowers and on this Paphiopedlum you may notice that the flowers are quite large, they're colorful. Uh, there's the newest growth, you can see how large it is. Looks really good. And you want to see that progression going forward. If you look at the base here, you'll see two new growths starting up. So there's two over here, and on this side, there's the third one. And that's what green jungle does. It really helps promote growth and flowering but it also improves flower color and size. Okay, so you get the fertilizer made up. You pour in what you think you're going to need into your watering can. And so when you water these plants, you want to water so you're thoroughly wetting the entire upper surface of the plant, just like I've done there. This is in moss. It takes a while to soak in and drain through. Uh, some of these, when you get them, are compacted moss in the center. And after they're done blooming, it's best just to repot them into fresh moss. But you can see how it's coming out now, the various drain holes throughout the pot and around the pot. And that's what you want. So that one's done. And I'll show you how we'll do a bark one. And it's the same thing, just flooding the surface well. That's coming out all the drain holes. That's it. This particular fertilizer mimics what is happening in nature. So in nature, these plants are getting rainwater. The rainwater is often fixed with nitrogen from lightning storms. There's also carbonic acid coming up from the earth when rainwater dissolves limestone in, in the soil. It is released as carbonic acid. So there's carbon coming up around the plants and ammonia, rotting vegetation, uh, bird droppings, insect droppings, they all create ammonia in the environment. And the plant's leaves have stomata on the backside, and they're able to absorb carbon and ammonia and the nitrates that come from droppings or from uh, lightning. Obviously, we can't do that in the home. So this particular formula that we developed is very balanced. It's low in phosphorus. 
it's fairly even in potassium and it also has extra carbohydrates as well as a wetting agent which helps the fertilized water go through and flow through the potting mix wetting the roots very evenly. I can tell you that I've researched all this very thoroughly and this stuff really works. In fact it works on any house plant. Works excellent on African violets, super on tomatoes. We had one guy who had a tomato in June and by the end of July he had a five foot tall plant with 40 giant tomatoes on it using this stuff. So it works not only on orchids but other house plants as well. I think if you try it you'll see the differences within a month and throughout the life of, of the orchids you're growing.